What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're talking our top must-own players for this 2019 fantasy football season. Basically, these are going to be the guys that I'm targeting across multiple rosters, multiple leagues, no matter the format, because even though some might be going in the earlier rounds at their current average draft position, they present incredible upside and Everyone on this list has the potential to finish top 10 or top 15 in their respective categories. Now, before we get into this breakdown, a quick reminder, if you haven't already, get yourself a copy of the 2019 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. For only 5 bucks. you get overall player rankings in standard and PPR formats, individual player bios at every single position, and draft advice not only for snake formats, but for auction formats as well, and much more. So check out the description for that. But with that being said, let's get right into it. We kick things off with Ezekiel Elliott, and I know what you're going to say. How can you have a guy like Zeke, who was a top four overall choice, even going first overall, regardless of the format, on this type of list? Well, it's because there is huge opportunity here because of the present contract disputes between himself and the Dallas Cowboys, which has led him to slip to outside of the top four selections in a lot of fantasy football drafts. Now, he's still going in the top four in some scenarios, which should tell you that people are still confident in Zeke, that even though the Le'Veon Bell fiasco is still fresh in people's minds, they realize that this isn't anything like that. This isn't like the Melvin Gordon situation. This is a different type of scenario. Zeke still has two years left on his contract, and the Cowboys desperately need Zeke. They go as he goes. We have seen it year in and year out. He is the most important piece to that offense, which means a deal will get done. There is no one on that roster, I don't care how good Tony Pollard has looked, that will give you Zeke type of production. And even if Zeke misses a game, two, or even three, Guess what? He is still going to give you top four overall running back production at the most important position in fantasy football, the running back position. And if you get Zeke outside of the top four in whatever position it is in the first round, congratulations, because you hit on an absolute gold mine. The upside is still there. You're capitalizing on people getting nervous. This is a smart risk. You want to capitalize on this now. If you are that nervous about Zeke, invest in Tolene Pollard, but that will not last long. Zeke is going to play the majority of the season and he will once again carry people to championships. Next, we've got Dalvin Cook. And with Cook right now, he's an early to mid second round selection. But I love the upside with Cook. We saw it last season when the Minnesota Vikings changed offensive coordinators and when Dalvin Cook finally got healthy, he started to look like the Dalvin Cook of his rookie year where he was absolutely dominating. No more Latavius Murray means huge opportunities for Dalvin Cook who is also an underrated pass catcher. He will get plenty of volume in an offense that wants to be run heavy. And I know people are going to go ahead and say, well, Dalvin Cook is a huge concern because he is injury prone. Guess what? Every single running back outside of the top four guys has some type of injury risk. I don't care who it is. They have some type of risk. That is why they are not considered elite, quote unquote. But guess what? At this point in time, Dalvin Cook is healthy. We're not drafting for what could be. We are drafting for what is. And what is right now is a healthy Dalvin Cook on an offense that is perfectly suited for him. I think he will have a breakout season. I think he is in store for a slam dunk, without a doubt, top 10 fantasy running back type of season. And he should finish this year as a surefire RB1. Continuing on, we have got Juju Smith-Schuster next. Juju is a current mid-second round pick, while I have him as a top five wide receiver potentially. The reason I say that is Juju has proven to be a consistent wide receiver on a Pittsburgh offense that these last two seasons also featured Antonio Brown. In fact, Juju Smith outplayed AB last season in terms of 
catches and yardage. The only area AB did better in was touchdowns. And now with AB gone, there will be a lot more touchdowns to go around for Juju Smith-Schuster. And I know the big worry here that a lot of people have is that with AB gone, people think that Juju Smith will take a big hit. He won't be able to separate himself from coverage and from the top cornerbacks. But look, I liken this to another breakout wide receiver from last season, Devontae Adams. I compare those two situations. Both guys have accurate, reliable quarterbacks, Big Ben and then Aaron Rodgers. And both those guys, Juju this year, Devontae Adams last year, didn't have much in a wide receiver number two. Yet, Devontae Adams was still able to beat coverage time in and time out. And that's because the NFL right now is an offense first league. The wide receivers, the pass catchers have such a huge adv huge advantage versus opposing defenses that they usually win their matchups. And I think Juju Smith has proven to be reliable enough that he will continue to do that without AB's presence. And without AB, there will be a lot more opportunities. He's already, already proven to be a top target for Big Ben. And I think this year will only continue to cement his status as a top wide receiver in the NFL. Next up, we've got Devonta Freeman. And even though Freeman has been a running back that has been injured now for two seasons in a row, I absolutely love his upside. As of right now, he is healthy. That's how I am treating him moving forward. That's how you have to do so. And if he is healthy, Devonta Freeman, for a full 16 games, he has top 10 running back potential or at least right on that border because you forget that he is one of the most dynamic dual threat pass catching running backs in the NFL. On top of that, he is on an outstanding Atlanta offense, one that promises to be one of the best in the NFL. And not only that, they shored up their offensive line, did a nice job of that during the draft. I think that'll go a long way in protecting Matt Ryan, giving him more time to find his targets, which will include Devonta Freeman. And that offensive line will open up holes for Freeman. No more Tevin Coleman. So I think the sky is absolutely the limit for Freeman. He is in an ideal situation here. I look for the Falcons offense to put up points left and right. And Freeman should have a huge year, especially in PPR formats. Continuing on, we've got Aaron Jones next. And Jones proved last season that there is no running back controversy in Green Bay. He was hands down the go-to running back when he was given his chance, dominated in that role, and laid to rest any worries about whether the Packers had a starting caliber running back on their roster. Not only did he do it on the ground, but he also did it as a pass catcher. Currently, Jones is going anywhere between the start of the third to the end of the third round. Great value there, because as long as there's a healthy Aaron Rodgers on that offense, this Green Bay team will be putting up points with the best of them. New coaches in Green Bay have said they want to get their running backs more involved as pass catchers. Another great sign for Aaron Jones, especially in PPR formats. Look, there's no doubt about it. Devontae Adams is the headliner for this offense. But afterwards, I really do believe that Aaron Jones is the next guy to know on that offense. I like what the Packers did this offseason. They upgraded that entire team, especially the defense, which in turn will give more opportunities for the offense, more scoring opportunities for Aaron Jones, especially in red zone situations. I love the Packers offense this season, especially Aaron Jones. Continuing on, we have got Antonio Brown. And AB probably made his way in a lot of people's do not draft list this last week and a half. But look, fantasy is all about taking advantage of situations when they present themselves to you. And this is a golden opportunity for so many people because I don't care how much drama is surrounding Antonio Brown. I don't care how much of a diva or how much of a nutcase he is. I don't care about the frostbitten feet. I don't care about helmet gate because both those situations will be taken care of by week one. He's not going to leave millions of dollars on the table because of a helmet. In fact, We've already seen him show up to training camp. We've seen reports from experts, from his agent, that this helmet situation will get taken care of. We know the frostbitten feet will also get taken care of. I don't care how stupid Antonio Brown is. That doesn't mean he won't be a successful fantasy player this season. Because still, throughout all this, nobody is denying the talent that AB has had. 
I realize that he probably won't have the same production that he did in Pittsburgh, that he now will likely be facing in Oakland just because of the situations, but he will have so many opportunities. The volume will be there, and especially in PPR formats, you have to like the ceiling. In fact, he will likely be a top 10 wide receiver again, and the fact that you can get him in the early to middle or end of the third round is an absolute steal. I would jump on Antonio Brown now if he falls to me in that scenario. Next up, we've got Adam Thielen, and it seems like Thielen every single year kind of gets disrespected, forgotten about, and undervalued. But I still think he's going to be a top 10, borderline top 10 wide receiver, especially in PPR formats. He's a guy that stays healthy. He's a guy that's consistent for the most part. Now, I don't think he's going to have the same success that he had last season because that was absolutely insane. But I think he'll still get you close to 100 receptions. I think he'll get you over 1,000 yards. And again, I think he will be right on that cusp of a top 10 wide receiver. The improved offensive line is something that you have to love for the Minnesota Vikings. I think that Vikings offense, along with the Atlanta Falcons, will be one of the best in the NFL. And whether Stephon Diggs is opposite of Adam Thielen or not, we've seen Thielen succeed in either scenario. I love what Thielen brings to the table. I think that him with Stephon Diggs is one of the best wide receiver duos in the NFL. He's pretty consistent. He will go ahead and get you a lot of targets, a lot of receptions, and going right now in the middle of the third round, great value. I'd go ahead and jump on him if he is available there, especially if you need a wide receiver one in later rounds. Next up, we've got Leonard Fournette, and to me, Fournette is another one of these guys that is being hurt due to recency bias from last season. Everyone remembers that he was a disappointment, that he was struggling with injuries, and that he didn't live up to his draft date expectations. But I think there's so many things going in favor of Leonard Fournette. Not only his ADP, which is towards the end of the third round, he's an underrated pass catcher. On top of that, he is in an offense right now that has a lot of stability that is built to run the football and that is going to have a great defense similar to Leonard Fournette's rookie season where he was so successful go ahead and really help out that offense and give them a lot of scoring opportunities. Nick Foles is going to be a game manager, and that's going to lend itself to Leonard Fournette being that lead guy yet again. There's not a lot of proven running backs behind Leonard Fournette to threaten him as long as he can stay healthy, which again, as of right now, he is that I think Leonard Fournette is going to be a steal at the end of the third round. I think he will be a top 15 running back, a late round running back that can potentially be your RB1, middle to low end RB1, great value pickup. I think he will surprise in PPR formats. And as long as the Jacksonville Jaguars don't all of a sudden implode, as long as they can just stay balanced enough and that defense can go ahead and bounce back from last season, Leonard Fournette will be a huge focal point for that offense. Next, I've got Robert Woods. To me, Woods is my favorite LA Ram wide receiver out of the trio that includes himself, Brendan Cooks, and Cooper Cup. I think he is more stable, more consistent than Brendan Cooks, who is a little bit more of a deep, down-the-field threat. Woods, I believe, will get more targets, more receptions. Usually, I would highlight Cooper Cup's name here, but I do think he will experience some rust when he returns from that season-ending injury from 2018. So for that reason, I've got Robert Woods. We know that this LA Rams offense will be explosive with Sean McVay running the show there, and I like a lot of this offense to go through Robert Woods. We saw that chemistry between him and Jared Goff last season. I expect Jared Goff, you know, to continue to get better, and that entire offense will benefit because of that. You still have some type of combination of Todd Gurley or his backup in the backfield, which I think will continue to lead this offense in the right direction and set up the passing game. So I'm not worried about this offense at all. And I think Robert Woods is the wide receiver to own out of this trio. Next, we've got Julian Edelman. And Edelman just might be one of the most consistent wide receivers on a week-to-week -week basis in recent years. Because 
thinking about a guy that's going right now in the fourth round and the production that you're getting, especially in PPR formats of about 14 to 15 or 16 fantasy points every single week, and you being able to take that to the bank is all you could ask for at that point in time. He is going to be a target machine. He's going to get you close to 100 receptions because he is by far and away the most trusted wide receiver pass catcher on that offense. The fact that Josh Gordon has been reinstated by the NFL and that he could potentially be available for the New England Patriots this entire season doesn't really make me want to shy away from Julian Edelman. It's not a guaranteed thing that Josh Gordon will be available for his full 16 games. And even if he is, he will go ahead and take away some coverages from Julian Edelman. And honestly, the second best wide receiver on that team just might be playing running back in James White. So whatever the situation might be, I'm confident that when it comes to to crunch time tom brady will look to his favorite target and that is by far at this point in time julian edelman with no more rob gronkowski and even with this being a run first team at this point in time when push comes to shove tom brady is going to julian edelman and julian edelman is going to deliver he's going to make the catch and he's going to get you that 15 16 points week in and week out Next, we have got Tyler Boyd of the Cincinnati Bengals. And unfortunately for the Bengals, they've suffered a lot of injuries leading up to this point in time on the offensive line, retirements there as well, and A.J. Green getting nicked up. Going to be out for several weeks, whatever that means. But everyone expects it to be for a shorter amount of time, which I think will be good news for Tyler Boyd because once A.J. Green returns, even while he's missing, I think we're going to go ahead and see why Tyler Boyd was a breakout of last year and even be someone that can go ahead and build upon that success. Because even though the Cincinnati Bengals struggled towards the end of last season, guess what? Tyler Boyd still managed to stay fantasy relevant. And he managed to produce on top of that, which is something so valuable. Now, a lot of people might be worried about the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And that it's just suffered a lot of injuries. That this probably not going to be the year. But I will say this, I am a little bit higher on this Bengals offense than some people might be. I do think when A.J. Green returns, it'll bring some stability to the offense as a whole. And I think that'll probably end up helping Tyler Boyd. But again, even without A.J. Green, I think he will be very valuable as well at that point in time. The biggest thing for me here is the addition of head coach Zach Taylor, offensive minded, now kind of switching things up for the Bengals. I think that's going to mean a lot more opportunities for that entire offense, for all those playmakers. And Tyler Boyd will, without a doubt, be one of the main beneficiaries there. And he's going to be a very consistent wide receiver two type of producer. Next, we've got Chris Godwin of the Bucks, And I love the upside of Godwin here. There's so many targets to go around for the Bucks with Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson gone. We know that Mike Evans will get his, but Chris Godwin is the popular choice to have a big production bump in 2019 we've heard guys like bruce arians the new head coach of the bucks say that he envisions chris godwin being on the field for the bucks for a big majority of time every single game you have to love that because you know that's going to mean a lot of opportunities for him as a pass catcher and on top of this, we saw it last season, whether it was Ryan Fitzpatrick or Jameis Winston, this offense was very high scoring. I think that'll be the case again. Jameis Winston in his now make it or break it year will definitely be uh, taking a lot of opportunities. A lot of scoring chances will be on the table. And I think all of those pass catchers on the Bucks will have a chance to Take advantage of that and Chris Godwin being a wide receiver two type of value at this point in time. I think he has a higher ceiling that someone you can get in the fourth round. I'd go ahead and take that, you know, middle to end of the fourth round. Good value at this point in time on a Bucks offense that will have a lot of scoring opportunities. It might not translate to a lot of wins in the NFL, but you're going to have a lot of points being produced here, especially for fantasy purposes. 
Next up, we have Chris Carson, and Carson is one of these running backs that has seen his value start to rise as of late, and I am perfectly fine with it because I love the situation he is in as of this point in time, and that is a situation where he finds himself on a run-first oriented team. For the Seahawks, we saw how much success they had last season when they shifted their offense to that type of offensive execution, and Chris Carson was the main guy behind it. Mike Davis, who was formerly with the Seahawks in 2018, now no longer part of that team, so less mouths to feed. And if you were worried about Rashad Penny, don't be, because he hasn't emerged as the running back that the Seattle Seahawks were hoping for. This is going to be the Chris Carson show. The only thing you could have possibly said before was that he wasn't getting as much use as a pass catcher. Well, guess what? Good news coming out of camp from Seattle is that the Seahawks plan to get him involved in exactly that category this season. So right now, all the arrows are pointing up for Chris Carson. And I'd go ahead and get behind it as well because he is going to potentially be that top 15 running back that right now some people maybe saw as an RB2 that could potentially have low-end RB1 numbers at the end of the year. Moving on, we have Evan Ingram. And Ingram is a tight end in that tier two category that I absolutely love the upside for. Look, with no more Odell Beckham, that frees up so many targets, so many receptions. There's been so many injuries for the pass catchers on this New York Giants football team that that just naturally means Evan Ingram is going to see an uptick in that category. Now, I still think it's going to be Sterling Shepard, that is the main pass catcher, main wide receiver on that team. But I would not sleep on Evan Ingram. And he is a tier two tight end that I think will break out this season. And we will be talking about one of the elite guys in that tight end position for 2020. Because honestly, he provides so many mismatches with his size to opposing defenses that he is just a coverage nightmare. We've seen him when he's healthy be a weapon for Eli Manning. Golden Tate is going to be suspended for the first four games. I love what Evan Ingram brings to the table. He's one of the most reliable guys offensively for Eli Manning. He has some of the best chemistry considering the guys that are left standing for the New York Giants. So Evan Ingram, he is a round six, round seven tight end that I absolutely love to break out and someone that you can have for relatively cheaper compared to the top three tight ends that are currently going in the first several rounds. Continuing with another tight end, we have got Greg Olson here. And I've been harping that Greg Olson is going to be the ultimate tight end sleeper for 2019. All he has to do is stay healthy. I realize these last two seasons he has struggled in exactly that. But this is the guy that was the first tight end in NFL history to give you back-to-back-to-back 1,000-yard-plus to back to back seasons. At this point in time, Greg Olson is, even though he might be labeled injury prone, pretty much a non-existent risk because that's all people remember. They remember the injuries, which has caused him to drop so far down ADPs in the late teens as far as rounds are concerned. He might even go undrafted. Go ahead. You're not really losing anything. There's nothing to lose. He has a huge ceiling if you draft Greg Olson. He stays healthy. He will be a top five tight end. I guarantee you this. This Carolina offense, other than Christian McCaffrey, they don't have bona fide pass catchers. Greg Olson is a possession pass catcher. He has size, something guys like DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel do not. He's going to be peppered with targets. DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel are more big play guys. In PPR formats, Greg Olson will be a top five tight end guaranteed if he stays healthy. Do yourself a favor and pick him up as worst a backup tight end that I guarantee you will be starting for you within a couple of weeks to the start of the season in 2019. Next, we have Matt Ryan. And as far as quarterbacks are concerned, Matt Ryan in 2018 was the number two scoring fantasy quarterback. And I think he can go ahead and duplicate that type of success, maybe with a top five performance in 2019. Because I said it before with Devonta Freeman, this Atlanta offense is my favorite unit in the NFL. I love all the weapons surrounding 
Matt Ryan. He's got Julio Jones, who we know is a top three wide receiver. He's got the up and coming Calvin Ridley. Mohamed Sanu is still there. Don't forget that. Austin Hooper is there. Devonta Freeman is there. That offensive line has gotten better. Oh, yeah. And the Atlanta Falcons play 13 indoor games this season. Matt Ryan is unconscious when he is indoors as far as his passing abilities are concerned. Last season, he put up MVP type of numbers, but people just didn't take notice because the Falcons weren't winning. Even if that's the case again this season, this Atlanta offense will be on fire and it's going to have a multitude of fantasy options, including Matt Ryan at the quarterback position. Next, we have another quarterback in Carson Wentz. And Wentz is a quarterback that is going again later on in drafts because he has a little bit of an injury history. But the last time we saw Wentz play a full season, he was a MVP favorite. Now with Nick Foles there, Carson Wentz is going to have to deliver for the Eagles. He just got a huge extension. I have faith that Carson Wentz will play a full 16 games. And if he does, he is going to be a borderline top five quarterback in my eyes. I think this is a Philadelphia offense that is pass first. It's got a plethora of weapons. Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar. The newly acquired running backs, Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard, it's got a good offensive line. This Eagles offense will have plenty of scoring opportunities. It's got a good defense to pair up as well. And Carson Wentz is going to be one of these late round quarterbacks that will be a steal and that will give you consistent fantasy production on a week to week basis. Next up, we've got Will Fuller, and Fuller unfortunately has been one of these names at the wide receiver position that has been associated with injuries, and that's what happens when so far in your NFL career you haven't played a full 16 games any single point in time, but hopefully, knock on wood, this is the year, and the thing is, if that does occur, Will Fuller could be an absolute steal, because I liken this situation with him and DeAndre Hopkins to what the Steelers had in Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. You've got that elite wide receiver to take away coverage and then Will Fuller to go ahead and really capitalize on that. Deshaun Watson, we've seen him air it out. And whenever Will Fuller has managed to stay on the field, he has been absolutely electric. He's got a late round ADP now where if you go ahead and take a chance on him, even as your flex, you're not losing all that much if he gets injured. It's not like you're drafting him in the 5th, 6th, or 7th round. So for that reason, I like Will Fuller as a potential sleeper that I'm going to be targeting across a lot of leagues. He manages to stay healthy. He's going to go ahead and be starting in my lineup more often than not. Next up, we have got Marquez Valdez-Scantling of the Green Bay Packers. And MVS was thrust into an opportunistic situation last season with all the injuries the Packers had, and he made the most of it. Now, fast forward to this season, and it's no surprise that MVS is being mentioned as one of the standouts for the Green Bay Packers offensively as far as pass catchers are concerned. And with the mentorship of Devontae Adams and with the healthy Aaron Rodgers, I do think MVS will be a very nice late round wide receiver that maybe he starts out on your bench, but as the season goes along and as he builds on that rapport with Aaron Rodgers, that he can go ahead and become a flex play every single week and a guy that can be a steal, a sleeper in those late rounds that you should go ahead and be targeting as a very valuable piece on your roster that you could potentially use as great trade bait later on. Coming in at 20th and the last name on this list, I've got Emmanuel Sanders. And what Sanders is doing right now, coming back from an Achilles injury last season and on track to be starting week one is absolutely incredible. And even though I don't think this Broncos offense will be all that good and the Broncos might struggle this season, I think Sanders is absolutely going to be the focal point of that offense especially as far as the wide receivers are concerned he's by far and away the most consistent and reliable wide receiver that the Broncos have and even with Joe Flacco under center I think that the targets and the receptions will be there to make him PPR viable go ahead and capitalize on his ADP that right now is way too low it's gonna start going up trust me on that and when it does go ahead and 
really focus on Emmanuel Sanders because in PPR formats, he's another one of those guys that doesn't get enough credit but is low-key very reliable and is going to get enough targets and enough catches to be putting up between 10 and 15 points every single week. So with that, we finish up this list of the top must-own players for this season. And as always, let me hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree with this list? Are these guys that you were also targeting? Are there names that I left off? Let me hear it along with any other fantasy questions you guys might have. And as always, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in future videos.